it's time to create our navbar component and actually end up with a full single page application. Let's head on over to our text editor and get started. So the first thing we're going to do is create our navbar component. So let's create a component called navbar.js and we're going to of course import react from react. This is going to be a simple stateless functional component. So it's going to be const navbar. We're going to take props of course and we are going to render out a navbar of course because that's what it is so nav nav component and let's just export default our nav bar now obviously when you have a navigation bar in an application you want to be able to click on the links and to go to that page and obviously because we're using react router and because we have a single page application that can't just be a link that goes to an entirely new page and reload everything like you would on an old traditional website. So what we need to do is we need to have a link and React Router provides us with a link component. Now, if you remember back to the first React Router video that I did, we created a link component. So you can kind of review that video and look at how that works and you'll get a sense of what our link component is going to do. Let's import our link component from react-router. Okay, so with our component now imported, we can go ahead and use it. So let's use our link component. And the way a React Router link component works is you just pass in a prop called to, and then you pass in the path. So in our case, we want to have one that perhaps goes to home. So let's pass in that one there and let's close that tag off. And then within the tag, you just have whatever text you want. So we'll have home for our text. And let's create another link that goes to users and close that off of course and let's just write users so you can see here we're going to have a nav bar that has two links one is going to take us to our home and the other is going to take us to users and all this does is that when you click on one of these links it basically tells react router okay the user wants to go to this route do what you need to do react router and of course react router will see oh this person wants to go to the user's route. I know that when I need to go to the user's route, I need to render out the user's component. With our navbar all set up, let's go ahead and use it in our app component. So we have our navigation throughout our application. So import navbar from dot slash navbar. And then all we need to do is just render out that navbar component. So go ahead and save that. Let's head on back over to the browser and you can see it's already refreshed. So now we have our navbar and we have our home and we have our users. So if we click on users now, we get our users component. And of course we can go ahead and fetch those users. And you can see that it's pretty seamless. Oh, obviously it's home and it should just be forward slash. So let's fix that quickly. So we don't actually have a home route, it's just forward slash, our index route essentially. So save that and let's go back to just the route. So back to our home, back to our users and then back to our home. So you can see that they just act like normal links, but you can see that as you click on one, that component then gets rendered and then you click on the other and that component gets rendered. And we have our nav bar consistent throughout the entire application. The same with this H1 telling us that this is our app component. And to make this just a bit more clearer, let's add some styling. So let's just add a class name to our app component of app comp. Save that. Let's add one to our home component of our H1. Let's just add class name of home. Save that. 
and then our users we have a class name of container so we can go ahead and in our style sheet let's just add in some styles for dot app comp let's just make the background uh, let's make it gray for our home let's make the background red and then for our I think it's container isn't it container let's make the background orange it's not going to look very nice but we should be able to see exactly the distinction between our components here a bit clearer so you can see here we have one component which is our navbar and our app component that's just one component although it looks like two because of the coloring of the navbar but we've got one component our app component which has our navbar in it as well and then we have our welcome home component which is in red and if we click on users you'll see that the app component now has an orange bit which is our users component and you can see that we have this child structure so you see we have our app component and then the child within the app component is our users list and obviously it looks horrible but that just kind of shows you exactly what's staying and then what's changing in a bit of a clearer way just to make your life a bit easier and the understanding a bit clearer and let's just delete that styling because obviously it looks utterly awful but you can play around with that and kind of get more of a feel of the relationship between the parent and the child component by using the colors to have that real visual styling so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to use our user profile component and we don't actually need to change that component itself what we do need to change is our user item component and what we're going to do here is we're actually going to change this div into a link component which of course we're going to need to import from react router with our link component imported and the link actually updated itself let's just break those down into separate lines we of course need to have a to prop on our link and that's going to specify where we want our link to go of course now this route is slightly different to our home and our users route because we need to have a dynamic root parameter because obviously when we have our list of users when we click on a specific user for example orange leopard we want to go to orange leopards profile and we need to tell our react router whose profile I want to go to so you can imagine that if we had a sort of proper application and you went to forward slash users or forward slash user sorry and then colon orange leopard you would make a query to the database and you'd get orange leopards information back and then you'd render that to the page now obviously because we can't quite do that with our api and we're kind of just faking that little step when we click on one of those users we're going to add their their information to our redux state and then just from our redux state we're going to select that information out and pretend we've made an ajax request so when we go to forward slash user colon orange leopard 744 we're going to get orange leopards information and the same if we went to green goose 347 and that will just give you a feeling of a sort of full application so let's go ahead and work out how we do that so in our two property of our link we're going to use some es6 to use some string interpolation here so we're going to go to forward slash user because that's what we want to go to we want to go to forward slash user colon and then it'll be orange leopard for example orange leopard so that's essentially the route we want to go to so to do that we go to colon and then use the es6 string interpolation and it's going to be props dot user dot login dot user name and normally that would be an id but as i said the api doesn't always provide an id and that will mess things up so with that two property on our link going to forward slash user forward slash orange leopard or I think it's 347 or whatever username we select we need to just add that into our index.js and then 
we should have an entire application provided our user profile component is correct. So in our index.js, all we need to do is we need to add a new root. So let's just get rid of this blah, blah, blah stuff because we no longer need that. And let's add a new root. So root, and of course we have a path. And now this time, because our path is slightly different, it's gonna be user, and then you just pass in brackets. And those brackets say I've got a URL parameter, a root parameter here, so it's gonna be colon user name. And that's gonna be obviously our username. And then the component we're gonna render out here is gonna be our user profile. And let's close that off. So of course we need to import that user profile. So import user profile from dot components forward slash user profile. And we can save that now. So if we head on over to our application and let's just go to forward slash. So at our home component again, let's go to our users component. Let's fetch our users. So now when we hover over one of these users, you can see that we get a link it's a link now and you can see in the bottom left hand corner of chrome i can't zoom in on it but it says forward slash user colon greenbird 411 which is obviously his username so when we click on greenbird we go to the user profile component and we've got a slight issue because it looks like we haven't selected a user which isn't right we should be selecting greenbird 411 and of course we can click back here and we go back to our user list and we can click forward here and we go to greenbird411 and you can see that in the user in the url sorry so if we click back and we go to organics1680 we get a different path i have obviously made an error somewhere so let's go back to our text editor and try and work out what the error is it's certainly something that I found really helpful when I was learning to see how other people solve their errors. Um, so let's just have a look at how I'm going to solve this one here. So I'm just going to work backwards. So the last thing I did was add the root. So let's have a look at the root and see if there's anything incorrect here that I can work out. So my path looks correct. I certainly go to path username correctly, which is what I'd expect. And the component is the user profile, which is what I'd expect. Am I importing that profile, sorry, that component correctly? So import components user profile, which I think is correct. Nope, that's the error. So I'm importing the React component, whereas it's actually a Redux container. So if we change that to containers and then user profile, we should now get the Redux container, which when we select a user, will add the user profile state. And then we should get that state mapped to our user profile props, and we should get our application working correctly. So we're at home, let's go to users, let's fetch our users, and let's click on silver frog. And there we go. So when we click on that user we go to the user profile component and you get their picture and their name and then their email address and we can click back and we go back to the user list and we can click forward and we go back to that user profile or we can go home and we go back to the home component and then we click back and we go back to the user profile component and of course we can click users here and get that list of users so let's click on another user, so small leopard 271 and we get that user's profile. So you can see that really quickly, once you understand React Router, and it's actually fairly simple, you can build great user experiences via React Router. A really flowing app that feels like a desktop application because we have the consistent components that don't change and we just update the things that need to change. So it feels as though our application isn't really loading, it's just transitioning. And obviously to do that, we just have to use React Router. We have our parent root, we have our individual roots, and our index roots. 
and you now know how to use the paths and the components and then pass in URL parameters as well. Thank you for watching this series. If you've liked the videos, if you've learned anything, please subscribe, like, or leave some comments. If there are any videos you'd like to see about React or Redux, just let me know and I will do them. So really, really thank you very, very much for watching.